Hello there guys, it's Michael here, and in this video I'm gonna address a very, very important topic for guitar players, and definitely one that is close to home for me, and that is how to learn guitar while avoiding common guitar-related injuries like RSI, tendonitis, carpal tunnel, cubital tunnel, and similar repetitive strain injuries. Now this is a really important topic for me because whether you knew it or not, around about 10 years ago, I couldn't actually play guitar. I started off with tennis synovitis, which developed into both carpal tunnel and cubital tunnel in my left hand through straining and overuse. And I literally couldn't play guitar for about two and a half years. And then I opted to have an operation. I had surgery on my left elbow, which hopefully that comes up. Uh, you can see there's the remnant of a scar down there but I literally had to have surgery and relearn how to use my entire left hand. So it wasn't just a matter of relearning how to play guitar, everything from holding my toothbrush to, so I could brush my teeth to holding a fork so I could cut my food, tying my shoelaces, absolutely everything had to be relearned. And eventually through practicing and doing all the uh, exercises from my surgeon and the rehab, eventually I could play guitar again. And let me tell you, after not playing guitar for three months and being uh, you know, wrapped up, the minute and moment my doctor said I could go back to playing guitar only five minutes a day was literally the happiest I have ever been in my life. And it was very, very welcome news. And almost, well, I guess it's been about 12 years, uh, coming on 13 years this year since having that operation. But literally here we are today, I'm still playing guitar. I have made a full recovery, but if I could make it my personal mission to help any guitar players at home who are having issues with their hands, with their shoulders, with their neck, who have carpal tunnel or cubital tunnel or RSI or anything like that, develop better practice habits that help them overcome that injury, then I'm doing my job. And if I could give back in any one way, it would be to help those people play guitar pain-free and get back to the hobby, which they love. Now, quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor. I am not qualified to give medical advice. I can just give you my perspective as someone who has gone through having multiple hand injuries over the 15 years I've been playing, somebody who has gone to every sort of therapy from uh, massage and uh, acupuncture through to kinesiology and seeing which doctors <laughs> trying to figure out the problems out of desperation. I've gone through every treatment. Some of them have been good. Some of them have been you know, like did not help at all. And sometimes that's very personal. But while I'm not qualified to give advice as a professional guitar teacher, I can retrospect upon what was really helpful for me and just general good practices, which most people are unaware of. And average guitar teachers or people who are starting out may not consider. So within the topic of today's lesson, what I'm gonna do is give you three tips which you can use to avoid developing guitar related injuries. I will also follow this up with a part two video where I go through my best stretch routine. So if you find this video helpful, make sure you like and subscribe so that you keep up to date with part two when I post that one next week. So what causes most guitar related injuries? Well, in my experience, there are basically two main causes outside of actually having a physical, you know, somebody stabs you in the hand or you drop a weight on your fingers. There are of course, external related injuries not caused by playing guitar itself. When I say guitar related injury, generally we're talking about carpal tunnel, cubital tunnel, tendonitis, tendosynovitis, and repetitive strain based injuries. Sometimes tennis elbow or golf, elbow or fro frozen shoulder. There's a number of different things which get colloquial names uh, and they're all different versions or different incarnations of the same thing, just isolated to different parts of the body. Now, what causes these injuries? I generally uh, believe that there are two causes. The first one is bad posture and the second one is excess tension. And more often than not, both of these things are happening at the same time. Now, what caused me to realize my problem was an RSI problem was the fact that my grandfather had his hip replaced. I'd been on and off suffering from guitar, this guitar injury, ongoing RSI, ongoing pain, which was pretty much a mild pins and needles from the tips of my fingers going up my arm all the way through my neck to my eyebrow. On a bad day, it was intense searing pain. On a good day, it was mild tingling, which if I overused my hand, evolved into that really, really bad pain. But getting back to what I was saying before, my grandfather had a hip replacement and he was walking in three days. And I was like, how can someone who is over 70 years old get a hip replacement and be walking three days later? And me, I was young at the time, I was, I think, got the injury around about age 19 and had it right through to uh, 21. I actually had the operation about three months, sorry, three weeks before my 21st birthday. But how could someone who's young like me, you know, in their prime physically and developing go 
well, why have I had this injury for two years? And it was because of my bad posture, my bad practice habits, all the excess tension that I was using, which I was completely unaware of, which was contributing. And the best way I can think about it when I say tension, if you're trying to drive with one foot on the accelerator and one foot on the brake, all you are gonna do is wear out your brake pads and grind up your tires. It's got, you know, you're trying to go and you've got tension holding it back at the same time. You've got two forces pushing against each other. And that's what's happening within your tendons, the nerves, the muscles, the tendons in your fingers, all those ligaments. If you're really, really tense, that's like putting the brakes on. And if you're trying to move all the brakes on, that is doing tons of damage and causing inflammation to all the, uh, the muscles and tendons in your arm. So if you've got really bad posture, that's gonna compound over time. If you hunch when you play guitar or you lean on a funny angle with your chair, and if you do it for five minutes, it's not gonna be bad. If you do it for 10 minutes, you might start to feel a bit uncomfortable. But if you're the kind of person that practices for an hour a day or three hours a day like I was doing at university, then it's gonna compound over time and just lead to really, really bad posture. The number one thing to remember is that your body will try and heal itself. You don't necessarily need all this medication or these sprays or these creams and rubs to help you. Your body will help itself and regenerate naturally. But if you are getting in the way of that by practicing with bad posture, you know, guitar is a very unnatural position. Your body probably wasn't meant to, uh, made, wasn't made to bend in that position for extended periods of time. But we do it because that's what we need to do to improve. If we've got bad posture, that's gonna to lead to bad things happening. And again, that excess tension we talked about before. And if we continuously day after day for hours on end are in a bad posture, which is conducive to excess tension, all those tendons in our hands rubbing against each other or wearing through the, the sheaths on our hands, tenosynovitis, then that's what compounds over time. So what is the solution? It's, it's just awareness. We need to be aware of our posture. We need to be aware of how much tension we're using. And we need to basically put little things in our routine to counteract it. And that's where our three tips for today are. So tip number one is your posture. The first thing you need to do is be aware of your posture when you're playing guitar. Now, I'm a big proponent of the classical position. And I'm not gonna say if you normally sit with a guitar, if you're a right-hand guitar over your right knee and adopt the cowboy position, that's wrong. It's definitely not. But I would recommend if you're gonna practice for uh, anything longer than 15 minutes, do 15 minutes in the classical position, a couple of minutes in the cowboy position, maybe a couple of minutes standing up. But at all times, you wanna make sure your shoulders are straight, that you are using your eyes to look rather than craning your neck, and that your posture is great. Other things you can do in your environment to help out your posture, is to have a really good chair. Like don't sit on the end of your bed. Don't sit on a chair that's way too big or way too small for you. You wanna basically have your knees on a right angle. I think that's really, really important. So when it comes to your posture, if your posture is out of alignment, it's gonna compound over time. And the older you get and the more you practice, the more those two factors are gonna multiply each other and lead to long-term discomfort and potential referred pain. If your back's out of alignment, that's gonna put your shoulders out. If your shoulder's out of alignment, that's gonna put your arms out. If your arms are out of alignment and they're trying to do these small micro movements over and over and over, that is not gonna be good. So simply by fixing your posture, adopting the classical position, making sure your thumb is low and your fingers are curved, that is gonna do wonders for your guitar playing. The second thing that you need to consider is the amount of tension that you're using when you're playing. And this is where I go back to the analogies of if you're trying to drive with one foot on the accelerator and one foot on the brake, you've got two forces which are going against each other and it's gonna tear itself apart or one thing is gonna win out over the other. Now, when you're a total beginner, and this is something that I definitely adopted from uh, being kids, uh, being a kid, sorry, and that I see with my younger students, is when you're a beginner, you have to squeeze extra hard with your fretting hand to make the string touch the wood, particularly if the action on your guitar is really high. What generally happens is in order to compensate for that, we squeeze hard with our fretting hand, and simply because we don't have the independence of our hands, we pick really hard with our picking hand as well. So the tension goes right through our body. As we get more developed, we don't need to squeeze as hard and we can relax a little bit, but many of us continue to squeeze really hard and we continue to pick really hard. Now, if you're bending, and if you've never done the bending technique, this is something you can experiment with right now. If you try and bend the string, your whole body is gonna be instantly tense. And if you look at any of your favorite guitar players, what kind of face do they pull when they're bending? Sometimes this face is just uh, an external expression of the amount of tension that they're using. And they might have originally developed that decades earlier when they were first learning the bending technique and they had to put extra effort in causing tension and that caused them to grimace or pull funny faces but now 10 years later 
although their hands are stronger and they don't have to put in as much effort, they're still tensing up. So whenever you're playing, you want to make sure relax. You, you're, so whenever you're playing and practicing, you want to make sure you are relaxed. One of the best things you can do at the start of any practice session after sitting in the right position and getting the right posture is to expel any excess tension. So you just want to take a big deep breath in, squeeze all your muscles and relax and just let go. Do it again, breathe in, squeeze everything, get really tight, get really tense and relax. Do that three times, breathe in for three, one, two, three, squeeze really tight, really tense and relax, one, two, three. What you'll hopefully realize is how much extra tension you are putting into your playing and sometimes that can be completely environmental. So with that extra tension there, just becoming aware of it is really important. Then what you can do is explore the minimum amount of tension you need to actually fret the note. And this is a great exercise you can do by playing a scale or even a single note. So grab your guitar, fret a note like normal and pick it. And what you want to listen for is a nice clear note. Now, assuming you have a nice clear note, I want you to relax your fretting hand 10% to 20% so that you're squeezing substantially less than what you were before. Then pick the string again. Now, if that was still ringing out nice and clear, very good. What we want to do is relax a little bit more and pick it again. And we can probably do this a few times if we've been playing for a long period of time until we find the point at which it starts to buzz and we're not squeezing hard enough or it's just a dead note. So if we find a dead note or it starts to buzz, then we need to add in a little bit more tension. So we add in five to 10% more till we get a clear note again. But let's just say your normal was 100%. What happens if you squeeze 10% less and it works? You're down to 90% and then you squeeze 10% less, it works. 10% less, you're at 70% of what you were squeezing and it's still nice and clear. You drop down to 60, it starts buzzing. Okay, go back to 70. You're now squeezing 30% less than what you were previously and you still have a nice clean note, which means that 30% of extra tension is completely wasted energy and it's only making things harder for you and slowing you down. What you should do is try that exercise right here, right now, and become aware of how much extra tension you're using. And then whatever you result in, whether that was 70% less, 50% less, it's gonna be different for everyone. And it may be different depending on whether you're an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar. What you need to do with that is to start working that into your playing. Go, oh yes, this is what less tension feels like. And now I wanna try and put this into my playing. Now that's gonna be relatively easy with melodies and single notes. It might be relatively easy with basic chords. And go back to the bar chord analogy, when you first learn bar chords, you have to squeeze the absolute bejesus out of them to make them work. And what happens is once you develop the calluses on your fingers, your hands get used to playing that, you don't have to squeeze as hard, but you continue to do so because that is how you practiced. So if you are quite good at playing bar chords now, Go back and try and reduce the amount of tension that you put into them and you'll hopefully be pleasantly surprised with how much easier they become, especially if your hands have got a couple of months or even years of additional callousing up since you first learned bar chords. But guys, that is how you become aware of the tension. It's gonna be extra hard to do that with bending and some forms of vibrato, but it will be well worth it. The last little thing to address is the actual action of your guitar. So sometimes the biggest cause of tension on your guitar is the fact that your guitar is not conducive to being well played you should get your guitar serviced and set up at least once per year by a professional. That will make a huge difference in your ability to play the guitar. And sometimes if you've never had your guitar serviced and your action is like your strings are two centimeters higher than what they need to be, you've been playing guitar on hard mode and you won't, you, you'll be beside yourself when you realize how much easier your guitar is to play when it's been set up properly. And that's something that was a big factor for me is I had this uh, Les Paul guitar which I bought and I never got it set up and I practiced on it for hours and hours and hours and it was literally a very high action and that led to part of the, the uh, problem with my tenor synovitis, the original diagnosis there. Point number three is developing good practice habits. And these include things like having regular breaks, uh, adding stretching into your routine and just being smart in the way that you practice. When it comes to most guitar related injuries, it's not something where you pick up the guitar and you play once and you hurt yourself. What generally happens is it's a compounding effect of bad posture, bad technique, uh, lots of excess tension and bad practice habits compounding over time until your body can no longer keep up and it just goes over that threshold and develops an injury. If we can take a couple of these steps to avoid that and develop good practice habits, it's gonna go a long way towards alleviating any current symptoms that you have as well as preventing any future injury. So the first thing that you should do is take regular breaks in your practice. 
I was obviously at university studying music, so I'd be with guitar in hand for six hours a day, and then I'd come home and I'd work at a supermarket and I'd pack boxes and scan groceries for three or four more hours. And if I didn't have work, I'd go to the gym and I'd lift weights for an hour or two. And then I'd come home and I'd do some more practice. So I was literally using my hands for 10 hours a day, most days. And that's what basically led to the overwhelm there. Had in my guitar practice, I taken regular breaks, something like practicing for 30 minutes, taking a five minute break, practicing for another 20 minutes, taking a longer break, that would have been much better. And it is way better for you to do maybe an hour in the morning, an hour when you get home from work and an hour before bed than it is to do three hours straight all the time. You can definitely acclimatize yourself to longer practice periods, but if you're just doing three hours straight without any sort of break, that is gonna be very bad for your hands here. You weren't really meant to do that with micro movements as a human being. The second thing you can do is add stretches into your routine. Now I'm gonna create a separate video to accompany this which is all about my guitar stretching routine. All the exercises I do to relieve the tension in my hands, my neck and my shoulders, and which are really conducive to you being nice and relaxed when you go to play guitar. That'll be in a separate video, but the physio gave me this one exercise and said to me something I'll never forget, Michael, humans weren't meant to be hunched over like that. What we want to do is develop good posture. And for every one hour you spend hunching forwards, spend five minutes bending up the other way. And in a moment, I'll segue to me doing this stretch for you because it's one of the best ones you can do. And that's a little bonus that you get as a prequel to this video, which is coming out soon. The third practice tip is to be aware of your environment. You wanna make sure you have a good chair, you wanna make sure the desk is the right height, you wanna make sure that your music stand is set up in front of you so that you're not staring at things on a funny angle or hunched over and bent. Yes, this relates to posture, but it goes beyond that. You need to take steps to set up an environment which is conducive to good practicing, good health, and good habits. So in summary guys, the three things that you need to do in order to help avoid guitar related injuries like RSI and carpal tunnel is to number one, develop good posture. Number two, to be aware of the amount of tension that you're using when you play and when you practice. And number three, be smarter in the way that you practice and develop good habits which are conducive to healthy guitar playing. Learn from my mistakes, learn from my failures. Having RSI totally sucks and you don't wanna do it. Carpal tunnel and cubital tunnel are no fun at all and tennis elbow, which most of us get at one point in life, again, is very, very painful, and none of these are conducive to guitar playing success. And if I can help you or any other person who's had problems with their hands, who's had these injuries before, make a recovery, stop playing with pain, and get back to the hobby that they love, then I would really, really appreciate the opportunity to help them out. So if you know anyone who has given up guitar in the past or is really struggling with pain, do me a favor and do them a favor and share this video. If you found this helpful guys, make sure you like and subscribe. And of course, I'm gonna follow this up with part number two, which is gonna be me going through my stretching routine. So make sure you've got your Lycra ready and your yoga mat so you can go through these exercises with me. Just kidding, there's gonna be nothing cheesy like that. But it is gonna be a really great practical exercise with some of the best stretches for guitar players. So make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss that video. And thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. So a really great exercise for guitar players with bad posture, who are always hunched over like this, whether that's on the end of the bed or in their chair, worst of all, lying back like this on your bed as you play guitar, is to simply flex out and stretch the other way. So what you wanna do is start by having your feet shoulder length apart, and you're just gonna stand up straight, look forward, and then put your arms up. Basically, just extend them from your shoulder length apart. And then what you're gonna do is just lean back and stretch out as far as you can. Now I'm gonna squat down so you can see my hands and fingers splayed out there. And you only need to hold that for about five seconds and then you can come back to normal. Now, you don't have to do this for a minute straight out of the bat. And if you're feeling any sort of pain or discomfort, then just stretch as far as you can and hold it right up until the point at which you know, it becomes a little bit too painful to bear. If you have really, really bad posture and you aren't used to doing any form of stretching, it can be really, really difficult. Now, if I go back to maybe early 2021 before I had the surgery, sorry, not 2021, early 2011 before I had the surgery, I couldn't move my hand up higher than that. I couldn't raise my arm because I was so tense and so jammed up. Now I've got the full range of motion back and if you don't have that full range of motion, all the other stretches are gonna help you get it back. But the main thing is you hunch over or you lean over like that, you straighten yourself up, roll the shoulders back and then stretch up to the roof and then just lean back and place your shoulders. Try and get them behind your ear if you can. Hold that for as long as you need to and lean back forward and hopefully 
you're starting to feel that stretch open up your shoulders and your neck and your hands and you feel much better because of it.